Hey, Professor Shumuraj Barry, welcome to another lecture on physics. Today we're looking at physics 147. So, uh, last time we left off looking at explanations of speed, I believe period, amplitude, frequency, and what was the last one? Oh yeah, wavelength. Now, well, I don't think you guys need an explanation for velocity, but today we're going to be looking at all four of these and we're getting some examples. So first of all, what is period? Well, period is the time it takes for one cycle in a wave to be performed. What is one cycle, you may ask? Well, you first, you need to know what a crest and a trough is. Let's say you have a wave over here. It has a trough over here. In other words, the losing Republican candidate. And then... <laughs> so, this is called a trough. And this is called a crest. Now, a period would be the time it takes for one trough and one crest. A cycle is when you already have performed one trough and one crest. So this much is a cycle. By the way, a cycle in radians is 2 pi, sometimes important. Anyways, that means that the t, uh, t is the period in which it takes uh, a cycle to be performed. Cycle time in seconds. It's basically seconds per every cycle. Or I believe one over hertz. Amplitude is equal to how high you uh, you make a wave. Now, usually amplitude, you can't make it. The only way to put amplitude, uh, get amplitude higher, I think that the only way, is to just rise the energy, in which there will be more potential energy starting, uh, thus there will be more uh, potential energy to convert into kinetic energy and so on. So, uh, that's what I believe happens, but I have no idea what happens on the microscopic scale and if uh, potential energy and kinetic or energy are even relevant at this point in time. So, basically controls how high or low are the highest points in the wave. Or in other words, it could be the height from the equilibrium state, which is where it starts, all the way to the top or crest where it happens. So it's basically a uh, height from equilibrium to crest. Now frequency is basically one over the time or uh, uh, how often a cycle, when, how often a cycle contains a, a cycle completed, or basically, uh, it's better to say it this way. Uh, the decreasing of lambda, it's basically like the factor in which they are, they are squished together, or how do I say this? The wavelength is shortened, or a, the length of a cycle is shortened, okay? Uh, that's all I can say. So, now, and that is a uh, length of cycle variation, which is, uh, has its own special unit, hertz. Now, we finally have lambda. What is lambda, you may ask? Well, it's the wavelength. It's the length between, it's the length that this is. It's basically the length of one trough 
and one crest combined. It's that's the length of one cycle. That's honestly not very surprising. And actually, I think it ends here. Right in here. So, that's one lambda. And it varies due to frequency. So, so, lambda and frequency is very high uh, for gamma rays as well as amplitude. So, that's why ga uh, gamma rays contain so much energy. So, th that means lambda is length of cycle. So, and I meant la uh, lambda. I'm getting my Greek letters confused. Anyways, uh, I'm going to have to write a Greek letter chart so I don't get confused once more. This is basically all I have to use anyway, so yeah. So, uh, now, this is my Greek chart so I uh, don't get everything mixed up. Anyways, <coughs> uh, now, uh, we know what T is. <coughs> so, uh, it's the second uh, that uh, every cycle takes. Or, and so now we know what amplitude is. It's the height from equilibrium to the crest. Frequency is related to the length of the cycle variation. Lambda is just the length of a cycle. Uh, I believe that due to the equation d to v equals to vt, you could say, nah, I'm not going to experiment with these kinds of things. Oh, uh, is, is everything going on okay? Okay, all right. So, kind of gargling from trying to merge two sentences into one. So, now, we're going to be looking at five characteristics. However, only two of them are going to be today. Doing the last five, uh, uh, three tomorrow. Then we'll get back to the regular schedule in which we'll be learning about all sorts of stuff, including longitudinal waves where the disturbance is the same direction as the cause or effect. So, number one, Number one would be, I'd say, the first would be, I believe, what is it, reflection, and today we're going to talk about refraction. So, uh, everything else we're not going to be talking about today. So, now, Today, we're going to be looking at reflection and reflection. Not reflection, ref refraction, oh my god. Anyways, uh, reflection is when a wave basically gets deflected by some sort of object or source. So, using a graph, the incident wave will just get deflected. And so, this is, uh, this is how mirrors work. So, this is theta of incident, and this is uh, theta r, which is the theta of the reflection. You wouldn't be able to see yourself in a pond without this kind of stuff. You wouldn't be able to see yourself in your own computer or your own mirror for, for this stuff. And you wouldn't be seeing anything without this stuff. You would be blind because not only does light depend on that, but let's say you have an apple. It, ha has, it has many colors to choose from. In this case, I only have white and black with me. So it has many colors to choose from, but it only chooses a select few. Also, can you finish it quickly? Uh, yeah, I'm, so I'm trying my best. So, only chooses a select few. 
So now it chooses those ones to reflect and all the other ones to absorb. The ones that they reflect when light hits an apple, that uh, then it, it, the light reflects and hits your cornea or eye, I think. I'm not a biologist. And uh, the colors, this light, this, the apple chooses to reflect from the rainbow or red and green, or in this case it's white and black, and not any other colors which it chooses to absorb, and thus you don't see them. Anyways, that means that you'd probably be blind without that. So, now, that gets us to refraction. We know that theta i is equal to theta r because we're just deflecting it. There's nothing new. It's like you slap a tennis ball at the same exact angle it was uh, hit. So now refraction, refraction would be like this. When you're going in a different medium, all the things change. You might be going slower. Yeah, uh, your frequency might change due to density or something. Uh, thing I know for one, the things get really, really, really funky when uh, uh, waves such as light enter different mediums. Uh, now, it, when waves also enter mediums of varying density, things uh, this also happens, but that's pretty rare, so we don't usually talk about that kind. Anyways, mm, things can change when you uh, go in when you go in a um, different medium. Now, you don't completely get reflected because a medium isn't a solid wall, but things uh, change a lot. Uh, now, the incidental wave. Looks fine, but the wave that reflects can look a little weirder. Of course, this doesn't actually have to be the case. And here, uh, data reflection is obviously excessively gigantic, but this is just a demonstration, not the actual thing. So, the incident wave is not e equal to the uh, reflecting ray. The data of the incident is not equal to data for the reflective wave. Now, we're going to talk about these three later. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.